maybe you're okay with this first one here because this is very similar to what we just did in that warm-up, which is a problem that requires you to deal with two different triangles, right? Because this, this problem here asks you how far apart are these two fires. And you have two different right-angle triangles if you look at this as the, the right angle here in each of those. Some of you have done this using the examples in the book, which is good. Essentially, that's the same as a warm-up in that, uh, I don't know, you might call this X and call this Y, and then say that this distance, I don't know, maybe call it D or something like that, and eventually you want to figure out what X is, figure out what Y is, and add them together. You just have to look at that triangle by itself and that triangle by itself. The 50 meters is in both triangles, this thing. Now, the only other thing is the angles here. The reason it's one a little bit harder is the angles aren't actually in those triangles. If you have, if you have that situation there where you have parallel lines, they're sort of parallel. Make this a bit thicker here. If you have this kind of Z shape here, where you got two parallel lines, that angle has to be the same as that angle. So you, you could say if this is 9, that has to be 9. So you could put the 9 down in there as long as those are parallel. That's one way you could do it. Or you could say this all together here has to be 90 degrees. So if this little bit is 9, it's going to leave how much left over for the other angle here for this angle? 81. So you can you could do that if you want. And the same on the other side. You could say if that's 7, this is going to be 83. So for a lot of you, I think it would help to draw them separately and say I have a triangle here where this is 81 and this is 50. And I want to find this. And I have another triangle that looks like this. And this is 50 and that's 83 degrees. And I want to find this. So if you find in both triangles separately, if it helps, simplify the picture by just making a separate one. All right. I'm not going to go through and find the numbers for you because I think once you get it down to that, it's stuff that we definitely know how to do. This one though, maybe we'll go through all all the way through this your turn question because number one, it's not in the text. I mean, it's not in the, the questions in the textbook, but there's no solution in the textbook. The answer is down here, of course, but this one's a bit more difficult because number one, it's you don't have the picture. Number two, it actually involves two triangles, but the triangles are overlapping. These triangles are not overlapping, they're beside each other, which people tend to find easier to work with. Here you have overlapping triangles when you when you think about this question. Not that we want to spend a long time drawing this, but somebody standing in a hotel window. So here's our hotel. Here's our person. And they're looking out the window here. They're looking at a bus that's <coughs> driving away. I'm not going to try and amaze you with my drawing skills, so we're just going to say that's our bus. Nice looking bus, eh? It's actually pretty small. for It's like a one-person bus, I guess, but... Wouldn't hold much more than this guy here, but he sees the bus, and then it says that the angle of depression of the bus changes from 46 to 22. So at the start, angle of depression is from the horizontal there, right? So at the start, this is 46 degrees, and then the bus starts to move away and ends up over here somewhere. And then when he looks at the bus, actually we should do it a different color. What's the... What's the angle afterwards? 23, 22 degrees. Afterwards, here's the, that angle is 23, 22. So you got two different angles, but again, they're not in the triangles. And uh, you have two right angle triangles. <laughs> we have more than two triangles here. You have this one, that's a right angle triangle. You have this one. This is not a right angle triangle, so we can't work with that one with what we know now. And you have this one, which is a right angle triangle. You use the two different ones because it wants to know um, how far it travels. It probably would help to actually label that on here, right? Label the, the what you're looking for, even color it in or something. You're looking for that. You have two different triangles. Again, I'm going to draw them both or highlight them both. There's that big one. That side is not in, that's not one of the sides of that triangle, right? And you have this one right here. That side's not in that triangle either, but 
you can use subtraction. Like the previous problem, you could use addition, find two different things and add them. When you have overlapping triangles like this, sometimes you can use subtraction. So I've taken up the whole space with the picture, but I'll make my picture a bit smaller. So if you label some things here, if you say, I'm going to call this X the side of the little triangle, and I'm going to call this Y, that's the side of that big triangle, the bottom side, and I'm going to call this little piece over here D for distance that the thing travels, because that's what we're looking for. And it always helps to draw the triangle separately. So I'm going to draw the yellow one here. We got X here. We had this was 46. So what's left over is that angle in there. If that's 46, what do you have in the triangle? 44, 44 right? There's 44. And the, you need one other distance, right? You can't just have an angle. It says the window is 100 meters. So this is 100 meters, and that's in both of those triangles, right? That's that's in that triangle. So that's that that's that yellow triangle, right? There's the yellow one. But then we also have the blue one. The blue one's the bigger one, right? Like this. You got your right angle. I'm calling this Y, that big distance there. You got your 100 here. And again, if it says that uh, if it says that the angle of depression is now what is it? It's only 22 degrees. What's left over for this angle in the actual triangle? 68. So then you can use those two things to find that y value. Okay, so that's the blue triangle. And then to find the to find d here, if you know how long y is and you know how long x is, you can just subtract to find it. Okay, so that's more involved and it's harder to visualize because the triangles are overlapping. But you got to just look for right triangles, even if they overlap with each other, and ignore the ones that aren't right triangles. So if you're trying to work that out, you find what this is, you find what this is, and then D is going to be Y minus X. You should end up with that. All right? You're going to end up using the tangent ratio for both of those because you have the opposite and adjacent, opposite and adjacent in each of those cases. You don't have the hypotenuse. That would be good to kind of learn for yourself is, because I know you're look at, you look at that formula sheet all the time, but if you don't have the hypotenuse, it's tangent. If the hypotenuse is not involved, and oftentimes the hypotenuse is not involved, you don't always have diagonal measurements and stuff like that. If you just have vertical and horizontal measurements, you can end up using the tangent ratio a lot. Anyways, the, some of these things are problems to, that involve those kind of situations. And the good thing, well, the good or bad, depending on your point of view, is if you look at starting trig number five, it's not anything new. It's just more problems to work with that are maybe slightly more involved. The difference is sometimes you have to work with one. Like this, this thing is just to start with here. Sometimes you have to look for what you're looking for. I really think it would be a good idea to highlight things. If it says the length of CD, actually color that in or mark it on the picture so you know what you're looking for. And then think about how you're going to do it, okay, because that triangle, you don't have any measurements in. You don't have any sides. But it does have a common side with the other triangle, and you do know a number in there. So you could use that angle, that side to find the side in the middle. And then once you find the side in the middle, you can use that to find the other side. It's going to be several steps here. These examples are not in the textbook, but I have a handout that I can give you that uh, to work through these examples if you want. And you can try, try the your turn questions. There's only one thing we have to correct here. I think this, is, uh, this answer is wrong for example 2. I don't know how far ahead you are here. Example two. I think this is actually 63.1 meters. Yeah, thank you. Okay, 63.1. Can you correct that? 
That's for trig five, the second example. So, again, those ones are not in the textbook, but you can work through them just the same, okay?